The question is, when it tests this 355 area, what happens next? So, Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a good week. So let's you know let's get into it. So indexes um, you know down across the board. You have Nasdaq Composite uh, down two percent ahead of our earnings that kick off next week with IBM and then Netflix to follow. And the week after, you got the whole uh, Super Bowl of earnings with Amazon and all that. Uh, stuff to follow. You had the S&P down about 1%. You had uh, the Dow down about a half a percent. Again, not earth shattering news. There, there's nothing about it that you're going to turn around and look at it one way or another and make a, a really, really hard determination. Um, the, the one thing I've always maintained that technical analysis, if you've been watching this broadcast, you know, my whole my whole world around, uh, revolves around technical analysis. I, I, again, I'm, I'm not smart enough. I'm an idiot. And I think most of us are the same. Just some of us don't accept this, that we're not smart enough to figure it out. We need data, a lot of data uh, to kind of digest, uh, back test, and you know, apply to see if it works. And usually I turn around and say, look, technical analysis is cut and dry. Uh, buyers even either clean up the sellers and supply and the stock goes higher or sellers clean up the buyers on demand and the stock goes lower. Um, but there is a time. There is kind of a kind of a gray area in the market. And a lot of people, uh, you know, could call it, you know, painted into a corner and call it, you know, summer trading. I don't believe in that. Uh, but there is, you know, there is an area of technical analysis that the bulls and the bears have a really good stance, and at least rationally, you can understand both arguments. And I think this is one of the times. So if you've been watching this uh, broadcast just in the last week, um, I've been pretty, you know, pretty adamant about you know, calling the market very tired, right? Uh, we've been on a huge run since May the 20th, put in a high, you know, 365 and change on the Qs. Uh, from the lows of what, 316? So you're talking about 50 bucks on the queues uh, since the 20th of May. That's a big deal, right? That really is a big deal. And the market just got tired this week. I mean, you saw a lot of names really gas out. Uh, the meme names that a lot of, you know, there's a lot of love affair with the meme names. There's hatred with the meme names. You know, a very emotional area uh, of the market, retail versus institutions versus institutions versus retail. Um, but the leaders in this tape, uh, Amazon, um, Apple, NVIDIA, they were just kind of chugging along, really, really aggressive. And they just kind of stopped. And this is kind of where you have uh, a good argument for the bulls and the bears. And here's the argument for the bulls. Market's just tired, right? Market's just tired. We're, we had a huge run. All we're doing now is trending right back, slow, orderly, non-descriptive, no aggression, no fear. There's nobody around. Everybody's on vacation. Everybody's enjoying the summer. We're going to retest, you know, we're going to retest this bottom channel here where we held and earnings are going to be the catalyst. They're going to catapult us to all-time highs once again in the next few weeks. I think they're right, right? I, I think they're right. Here's the bear case, right? Bear case is very simple. We had a huge run, right? We had a huge run, too far, too fast. Speculation money is coming out of all asset classes, uh, including Bitcoin, including these meme stocks, including, uh, for example, just the Russell itself, right? The Russell itself, uh, the market can't sustain this. Uh, we're going to go lower. We're going to go lower. We're going to go lower. And you know, in a, in a weird way, and again, that's an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but they might be right as well. And the one thing that, I, that I've learned um, throughout all these years, and I'm doing this for you know, 22 years, just don't guess, right? Really don't guess. This whole week, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast, it's not that I've been sell biased, okay? I was just sell value biased. And, you know, the market has been strong and we were just looking for, you know, looking for clues. We got the first clue with Russell breaking down check. 
Uh, the second clue based on that kind of a piggyback effect on that was the kind of like stalling out pattern of all these speculation uh, Bitcoin things, right? Bitcoin kind of stalled out in this 31, 32, 33,000 area. The dog crap coin that everybody was going to the moon and this, that, the other thing, uh, that thing is you know starting slowly but surely crashing down uh, into the reality. But the, the biggest clue for me this week was the leaders stopped. And the most important leader at that juncture that had the biggest run was Amazon. And you'll notice there's, you know, you'll notice there is um, a pretty good common denominator of what happened this week. And if you notice here, Amazon tapped out. It, that's all it did, right? It tapped out, had a monster run uh, from the first breakout of 3,300 and the next breakout above 3,500. So it just gassed out around that uh, 3,800 area. And it put in a blow off top, an inverted hammer. And the first clue was it closed below the five day moving average, right? You're going to see a lot of similarities in this in a second. So it closed below the five day moving average. And for all you guys who are just watching this broadcast for the first time, for me, the five day moving average, and all you guys have been following me for years, you kind of know this, it's the shortest term sentiment. Above the five day, that's bullish. You can see here when it held, held the five day, it bounced, it held the five day, it bounced. So the first close, below the five-day moving average on Amazon, triggered a sell signal, and you'll see the pivots in a second. Uh, big, big move down all the way to the rising support. Again, nobody's talking about Amazon's going to 2,900. We're just, again, we're, you know, we, we trade channels. I'm a channel trader. I, you know, I'm not trying to predict what's gonna happen you know, three weeks from now. Who knows what's gonna happen three weeks from now? You know, there's a catalyst there. We'll see what happens in earnings. Again, raise your hand on Amazon if you don't think they're gonna beat earnings, right? They're probably gonna beat earnings. Again, how the stock reacts, you know, your guess is as good as mine, but the point is we're not trying to guess. So five-day moving average, got compromised, and that was the first poll. Then you had NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA had this ridiculous run. They announced uh, a four-for-one stock split, and the stock literally went from 560 all the way to you know 835. And again, you can see here the first close below the five-day moving average. You've been watching these this broadcast this week. You saw those monster pivots on this thing. This started a really, really aggressive uh, sell signal with Thursday and Fridays. Yet yeah, Friday's pivot was was crazy, but Thursday's pivot wasn't wasn't that bad either. Uh, so that got a sell signal. Now, you know, raise your hand who you know who the third leader is, right? Third leader is Apple Computer, right? Um, I don't know if you ever heard of them. Uh, they make computers. I think they still make computers, right? The iPods, the iPods, the iToilets, everything in between. So you'll notice here a very common denominator. And if you see here, this is the first close on Apple below the five-day moving average in this whole formation. So if you believe in conspiracy theories or da, 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 technical analysis, this is not a good thing. And when I mean not a good thing, I mean not a good thing for Monday. I'm not saying Apple's, I think Apple will see 200 probably in another year, um, you know, maybe even, even less. You know, I, we're talking about from the next day. We can only make determinations based on short-term data that we're getting. So if you believe in technical analysis and you believe that the market is led by leaders and the market is pulled by leaders, well, you got your first domino, Amazon, you got your second domino, of NVIDIA or NVIDIA. I know I butcher the name all these years. And this is Apple's first close below the five day moving average. And if it confirms, again, nobody's saying it's gonna to go to 120, but we're talking about a measure potential, maybe a two day measure potential to the 142, 141 level. Again, if, if, we don't know if it's gonna confirm, if this five day confirms on Monday. So we have a lot of data, right? We have a lot of data. And I've been saying pretty much uh, on all the videos and all the, you know, throughout the, you know, throughout the trading day, I, I, there's no reason for me to buy stocks. There's, for, at least for now, there's absolutely no reason for me to buy stocks because number one, they're all either starting to confirm the five day or below the five day moving average. The Russell uh, is broken short term. There's a, obviously a buyer strike in crypto, right? Speculation money, speculation money, speculation money, tired stocks. That's all they are. Tired stocks. Not saying they're not going to go higher. A week from now, two weeks from now, who knows? But they're tired. They're very, very tired. And all we're trying to do is capitalize on exhaustion, right? That's it. Again, like, like I've been saying for you know for years and years and years. Think about it. You know, run a marathon, 26 miles, three and a half hours, four hours, five hours of running, and then oh, by the way, go swim, you know, go swim another five miles, go bike another 26 miles, right? You're gonna be exhausted. You might be able to do it. 
right? They're called triathletes. They might be able to do it. We're not going to do it if you're not prepared for it. You're not going to you know, do it if you, you know, if, you, if you don't train for it for years and years and years. So they're tired. And all we're doing is using technical analysis, just using common sense. The most, um, the most uh, basic thing in, in technical analysis and common sense is the eyeball test, right? If stocks can't go up, well, what do you think is going to happen? And that's all we've been kind of doing uh, throughout the week. I've been probably 95% sell buys uh, the whole week. I've been trading on the short side. I, I don't think I bought a stock. Uh, maybe Monday off the gap the gap down. But uh, anyway, I, I'm pretty much sell biased. Uh, if you've been watching this broadcast again, pretty much all sell signals uh, all across the board. Uh, and it's, and it's and again, it's very, very important. Now, where it gets a little hairy. This is where it gets a little hairy. Can can the cues and assuming Apple leads the way on Monday, can the cues touch this uh, three fifty five area? I, I think it can, right? I, I think it can. The question is, when it tests this three fifty five area, what happens next? So, prior to the three fifty five area, this is just an exhaustion candle. These are stocks going just drifting lower from exhaustion levels into rising support. You can see here every single time it touched rising support, it bounced, bounced. So this is kind of be the do or die area. So what we're looking for for a more aggressive look at the market, at least short term, is what happens on that 355 test. The bulls are either going to defend that area and pretty much confirm what we've been talking about, kind of a drift back test into rising support. We've got a catalyst coming up on earnings, go back to the 52-week highs, all-time highs, or do we violate this 355 area on a close, close below, and then you have a big matzo ball, right? You have something much more than stocks are just tired. Uh, this is just an orderly back test. It's the summer. The volume stinks, blah, 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 blah. You have something more. Again, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. And if this closes below 355, then you have 10 to 14 points of downside on the Qs. That's kind of a big deal, right? That will be a big deal. Um, and again, we're not I'm not trying to scare any investors or anything. We just want to be prepared. That, again, that's all we do as traders. We're not trying to convince anybody what we do is correct. We're comfortable in our own skin. We follow our process. Whatever our process is, however you trade, you follow that uh, blueprint. You follow those guidelines and the chips fall uh, where they may. But as far as this broadcast goes, I'm just trying to get everybody to kind of look at the market from a different point of view, right? Look at it from a safety point of view, watch out for potential red flags, and don't get caught with your pants down. Because again, throughout the week, as we've been saying, hey, stocks are tired, stocks are tired, watch these breakdowns. You see investors sitting there and say, well, this is nothing, right? This is nothing. It's nothing until it's something, right? It's something until it, it's nothing until it really affects you. And if you trade or invest with your eyes closed, you're not going to be good, right? You're not going to be good when there's things, you know, when there's things that are out of your control that you can actually have avoided, but you you believe that your Teflon approach that everything always goes up, all dips get bought, and yada yada yada. Three months later, you're in, as Jim Cramer would say, uh, the house of pain. So that 355 over under on a close uh, is going to be super important. Uh, all in all, uh, very solid week. Um, big pulls, very very aggressive pulls. Uh, throughout the week, um, Catalyst next week. Again, you got IBM kicking off technology earnings Monday. Uh, you got Netflix uh, for the beta names on Tuesday, and then next week you got the mother load, right? You got Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, uh, everything in between. So earnings season is starting its first inning of technology. Uh, we'll see, right? We'll see how uh, the market uh, accepts earnings again. Uh, from the bear case, we're up too much. From the bull case, this is just a, a road stop. This is just a, you know, a little speed bump until we start reclaiming highs. Hey, they're both right. Okay, let's see how it plays out. Again, I am the king of the idiots. Don't try to, you know, don't try to convince yourself that you're smarter than the market, that you, you could trick the market, you could get cute with the market. Every single time you try to trick and get cute with a trade and boredom and all that stuff, you get run over. And these are facts, and we all know this. Uh, so instead of trying to convince everybody how smart you are, be reserved, right? Check your ego at the door. Nobody cares about opinions. Stocks are either going to defend levels or get cracked below those levels and price action will probably soon to follow. So going into this week, again, starting off Monday, I'm probably going to be more sell biased than buy biased just because 
you know, we, you know, just because of the leadership, um, just because of the leadership that we've seen uh, kind of get tired and start getting pulled. And so if Apple gets pulled, probably everything else uh, will get pulled as well. So uh, let me give you some ideas uh, for Monday. Some names I, I, I kind of like. Uh, Roku, I still like here. You can see uh, first close on Thursday below support. Uh, it held the same area twice. If this thing cracks, you got 10 to 15 points to the downside, assuming the market uh, continues to be weak. Uh, look at Intuit, right? So here's the first close on the 5. It went to the 10, right? The 10 is being defended for now. If Intuit starts building below this channel and it's held the same level twice, so all you got to do is look at charts this weekend, guys, and you see a lot of names like this, right? If this thing starts cracking this level, you got, you know, eight, nine points of downside, uh, to the next channel. Again, nobody's saying it's going to go to 400. We're just talking about a trade, right? A cash flow trade, measure potential uh, into supply. I mean, look at you know, look at Facebook, right? Look at Facebook here. It cracked, right? Cracked on the support, uh, put in a low, back-to-back -back days, held support the same area. Look at the 60-minute channel here, right? So look how tight it's getting, right? If Facebook cracks, again, you got, you know, seven, eight points. Again, assuming the market cracks. So you have a lot of names, uh, look at the semiconductors. NVIDIA is taking them down. Look at the video. First close below this whole rising support. This thing confirms you got six, seven points down. So there's, if you go through charts, okay, look at, look, look at the NASDAQ 100. It is only a hundred names. It will literally take you five minutes. I promise you. Uh, if you go, especially if you use like TC2000, what's cool about it is there's a space bar, space bar feature on TC2000. And if you hit the space bar, right, just it, it, it literally goes one stock one by one. You can literally knock out 100 charts within three to five minutes and, make, and get a really good actionable list to trade for the next day. So definitely, you know, definitely a lot of value uh, to the downside ahead. And we'll see what happens. So let's talk about Friday's uh, action very, very quickly. And again, this is, you know, this is this has been my whole mantra throughout the week, still seeing a bunch of really good downside channels. There's too much supply above, right? I go, obviously, that can switch in, in, a, in a heartbeat, but I'm patiently waiting for downside channels to confirm and technology just like yesterday, right? Thursday, there was no video. There's no video on Thursday. It's kind of my rental, kind of my mental reset day. Uh, and that's exactly what happened on Thursday. Everything got pulled. And that's what we're waiting for, right? So let's stay patient, waiting for channels to develop. Still seeing better value to the downside as we saw yesterday. Patience pays off with all those heavy, massive downside channels. Good morning. So the only one that I, I kind of like to the upside, there's actually two, but there's one that uh, I confirmed, not a big move. Uh, BLL86, one of the very few setups I see, uh, not a big move at all. But again, at least it moved, right? At least it moved uh, something to the upside. Uh, 86 went to like 86 and change, and then the market sold off. Uh, Dow finished down 300 or so. Uh, checkpoint never reclaimed uh, that 125. ZS traded to 218, never got there. NET, I still like. That 101 level is going to be very, very big. It's another setup I like for uh, Monday. Look, look at this. It, it held it now three times. One, two, three, right? This 101 area, if this thing breaks on NET, this could be really good. Uh, here is definitely uh, the trade of the day on uh, NVIDIA. 7.53 if it builds below and market pulls can see 7.30. Uh, NVIDIA got destroyed. Uh, I got short. I know a lot of you guys caught this thing. Great job. So here is the 7.53. That was yesterday's low was 7.54. The previous day put an opening range low. It took out 7.53 and just, just destroyed, right? So here's the whole channel here. Just absolutely destroyed. Uh, went all the way down to 7.23. Just an awesome move. Congratulations for you guys. Uh, who caught uh, NVIDIA with me, uh, Amazon, another big one, 36.19, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Amazon, right? So here was Amazon. It took out the 10-day, right? First close to the 10-day, first close to the 5, confirmed, went to the 10. First close over the 10, confirmed on Friday, went all the way down to uh, 35.70s. Uh, nice move down on um, nice move down on Amazon. I wasn't watching coin 220 for builds below. I was not watching. Did coin do anything? Did it take out the 220? Nope. Held the 220. Watch also coin. Watch also coin for uh, for Monday. Takes out 220. You got four, you got you got four to seven dollars of downside. Uh, watch that as well. And I go listen. We'll start putting in more pivots as the day progresses. But you really don't need a lot. That's the whole that's the whole point. Take on the way down on Amazon. Perfect. Uh, NVIDIA, I still like this Roku. So far, it hasn't confirmed. New lows on Amazon. NVIDIA destroyed. Possible move to 730, went to 724. 
uh, Bill Newhai's work. I kind of like this work, by the way. Uh, look, look at Slack. I, I doubt I doubt it confirms that the market's weak, but just in case it's strong, keep an eye on the Slack uh, above this forty-five dollar area. Um, Amazon more lows, Nvidia seven thirty on deck. So that's it, guys. That's it. I mean, uh, we're set up for Friday. Uh, excuse me, we're set up for Monday. Uh, all in all, uh, the market continues to be quote unquote macro strong. Uh, but guys, pay attention to that 355 area, especially for the investors. At any close below 355, you're going to have some short-term damage. Guys, have a great day. Have an awesome weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you all Monday. Take care.